Hi there, everyone. It's Katrina Sawa here with jumpstartyourbiznow.com, and I've got my amazing friend Yvonne Silver on with me. Hello, Yvonne. Good morning. Great to see you. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, you know, we were talking, uh, we've been talking for a couple months about doing this because we both talk to entrepreneurs, and we could tell, come on here and t give you a gazillion tips on things you could do, but then you'll be overwhelmed. It'll be like a fire hose and kind of what I do to everybody all the time anyways. Um, so we thought, well, maybe we should dive in with some of the things that you could be doing to sabotage your success. Because sometimes you just don't see those things. You're going along, you're doing the thing. And so that's what we're kind of talking today. Some of those self-sabotaging activities, some of those mindset shifts, some of those beliefs and things, um, as well as I'm sure we're not going to be able to not give you a couple of quick tips on things on what to do, because that's just our nature. So um, Yvonne, why don't you share a little bit about yourself and who you are and how you came to be this amazing person you are, and then I'll share what I do, and then we'll dive in. Sure. <laughs> So um, I'm working with uh, women entrepreneurs who are seeking to flourish. So it's those women who need more sales mastery. They need to stop the imposter syndrome. <laughs> and often they're buried in their business and they need to shift from a solopreneur to a CEO mindset. So I'm bringing my 30 plus years of business experience in nine startups, four countries, um, working with women entrepreneurs for the last 15 years in specific to this conversation to help them have more confident conversations, more clarity and more resonance in their messaging and to be able to really stand out. And you asked me, why do I do this? Well, I do this because as a kid, um, I grew up in London, England. You can tell from my accent, wasn't born in Canada where I live now in Calgary, but born in London, England. And my mom uh, married my dad late in life. She was a woman professional. And um, my dad came back from World War II, got a bullet in Dunkirk and was PTSD. He just did not get treated. And he took it out on my mom. So much criticism. He diminished her personality. He destroyed her dignity. And that's what I watched growing up was my mom lost her voice and her power. And I swore I was never going to be that person. So when I started thinking later in life, you know, I want to write a book. I want it to be a bestseller. What's it going to be about? decided that the power of words was so embedded in my soul that I needed to get that out because, you know, he, he criticized me at 11 as well and told me I would never, ever be successful in life. And that stuck with me for like 45 years, that messaging. And I don't want other women to not be able to flourish in business. That's my passion and that's my purpose. And that experience led me to this work today. Wow. That's, that's some amazing story. That's a, uh, and, and you're right. The power of words. I talk a lot about that. Um, I had a similar, um, my dad was really brilliant and really nice to me in some respects, but one minute he would compliment me. The another minute he would tear me down. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, and he's been dead for now for 15 years which, you know, hey, it's freeing. But so thank you for introducing yourself. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I am Katrina Sawa, and I am known as the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach because I kick people in their butts to actually do the right things, more of the right things, so they can reach a lot more people, make a big, bigger impact, but also really make a lot more money doing what they love. So I, I do work with a few men, you mentioned women, a um, few brave men who are willing to be maybe told what to do um, because I don't want to mess around. I'm in it to win it. Someone just said that to me earlier today. And I want to work with people who are serious about building a really successful, profitable business while making a big impact. And so I love doing that. I love finding those holes and those tweaks and those opportunities for you to be more productive, be more profitable, and have a better life in general. Because if you're not happy in your personal life and you're just a workaholic, that's not good either, right? So we have to really not get balanced, but harmony with everything you're doing. So I look at everything from the big picture all the way down to the nitty gritty of what you do say, send, post, and what you look like online, which is really huge. 
Uh, and I've been doing this for 20 years. I got in it because I was an advert. I was in sales and marketing forever, but I had a job that was an advertising sales rep for the local newspaper here in Northern California. I know it was 22 years ago. They were still reading the newspaper. And uh, so I would go out and sell ads to people in the community, knock on doors. I was much a cold caller. And uh, boy, did that really build my character for sales for sure. <laughs> But then I fell in love with these small businesses who had so much passion, but then didn't know what to do in all the things. They would try to throw money at me to run an ad, but then they wouldn't take care of the, the prospect or the client when it came in the door. And they wouldn't do follow up and they went, oh my God, it was just a mess, right? So I knew that I had to teach other things besides just get them to run an ad. So now I think advertising is the is the last thing I want people to do. I'm all about free first, then pay. What can you do for free? Where do you need to be? What do you need to say? Where do you need to get in front of before you need to invest in marketing? People always say, well, I can't afford any marketing. Well, marketing doesn't have to cost money. So yeah, that's me. And so let's dive in with um, some, some of the biggest mistakes, self-sabotaging things perhaps, and or things you just don't know you don't know when you become an entrepreneur and even as you're growing as an entrepreneur, because if you're not investing to learn how or to learn differently or to learn more, then you will be making some of these mistakes, unfortunately. And even if you mm -hmm. do, invest, sometimes you get the wrong advice that doesn't work for you. So what do you, what would you say to that, Yvonne? Well, a lot of the women that are coming to me, um, they're self-sabotaging because they're not confident in what results they provide. So that's, you know, you're very action oriented. Um, you know, I look at personality science a lot. So you're very action oriented. I'm uh, nurturing and then action. So we have slightly different styles, but I'm looking at it and saying, you know, what is there, what is it that they are especially proud of? They know that they've got it nailed. They know that they can repeat the results. It's very clear what the outcome is and what their passion is. And where, where I do my work is about intersecting between skills interests abilities passions results that you know really dialing into that secret source and you talked about marketing to be able to stand in their truth so it's not about saying stuff it's about being it and mm -hmm. resonating that with um, there's a book um, I very often refer my clients to called um, attracting the perfect customer the power of strategic synchronicity and so instead of, um, in this example they use of uh, trying to attract boats, you can stand on the beach running up and down, flapping your arms and waving and, you know, come on in boats, boats. Or you can become the lighthouse standing solidly on the beach, beaming out this message for everyone to see for far and wide and attract clients that way. So that's what I always propose to my clients is become the lighthouse, get really clear on what you can provide, the value of it, be able to speak to it you know impromptu you don't need a script you just tell your story and who you are and that is one way to get out of self-sabotage do that analysis I had a call with a guy last night don't often talk to guys but um uh, we were working through you know why are you not getting the results you want well here's some starting points that you want to reconsider and revisit so that would be one um there's also an article I wrote just on uh, posted it on LinkedIn with some updated stats this week, because a lot of women in particular are starting new businesses. I think it was 49%. You have to look at the article on LinkedIn. Um, but then in the first year, there's or in the first five years, there's something like 47% that aren't making it. So they're starting, but they're not completing and they're not able to keep it running. Well, why is that? A lot of times it's because they don't know how to hire a team. They don't know how to find and hire and lead people so that they can be empowered and remain in a CEO mindset. They're still stuck in the solopreneur mindset of doing everything myself or not having clear measures of success to be able to delegate and empower your team. So they think that they're at the top of the triangle, right? They're the owner of the business. They're sitting up here and everyone else is down here doing the work. I, I say flip the triangle upside down. So you are at the base of the triangle as the leader supporting all of your team to make sure that you're removing any roadblocks that they have to success. So they have the tools, the knowledge, the freedom, the empowerment to do the work and self-motivate. And when you take everything else out of the way, people will 
flourish, especially if they know that they've got your back, you've got their back and you trust them to come to you if they get stuck on something, but they're not, uh, you're not bottleneck because you're not pro problem solving everything for them. You are giving them the leeway to say, well, if you've, you know, you've got this issue that you've seen surface, what are your first couple of thoughts about how you're going to tackle it? Or what have you tried already so far? So you're not leaping in as the leader to try to solve everything. And then they stop asking themselves what the solution is and become dependent on you. And you become a bottleneck and you don't want that as you build out your organization. So there's a couple of things in there about self-sabotage, um, things I've observed in my clients too. What about you? What are you seeing? Yeah, I like that. Well, confidence is a big one for who I talk to, but I talk about it in relation to um, the, so the being and the doing you mentioned. Um, I've always been a doer, right? And you can tell. And <laughs> and uh, people now, so what, most of my advice is you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to say that. And, blah, blah, blah. and I had to learn the lesson of being, um, how to be more and to be that lighthouse and just sit there and be the lighthouse. That's hard for me, right? To sit there and be the lighthouse instead of running around the beach going, dip, 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 going to all the networking events and speaking and doing all the follow-up, right? And so I do do a combination of both, but I think um, I love talking about the doing. So more what I teach is the doing stuff because it's the practical, tactical, what do we, how do we need to position ourselves? So I think one of the biggest mistakes or things people don't, uh, invest in or learn is they don't realize they need to learn how to be an entrepreneur. They don't realize they need training, an entrepreneurial training. They need a business school. They, but I, I came from a business school, but I didn't learn how to be an entrepreneur at business school or marketing classes. I didn't, I didn't, until I got into the trenches and hired mentors, I did not know what I did not know. And I would yep. never have succeeded ever. Yep. without investing in someone who's been there, done that, still doing it, and going to show me exactly what to do and what not to do and how to do it and to stop messing around and be serious and this is how I'm going to make money. And if you think, I think the biggest thing is you think you can't afford it. You've got to say, look, i got to go get a job because I have to be able to invest in a coach in order to know how to do this thing. If you wanted to start any kind of, if you wanted to be a doctor, you'd have to go to medical school. you got to go to school. If you want to be a lawyer, you have to go to law school. You don't just walk into a, uh, you don't just walk into a court and try a case, right? Yeah. Here's, here's, <laughs> the thing. here's the thing, though, especially, and I see this a lot. I have a lot of clients who are coaches, right? Is a lot of the coaching um, institutions, the programs that are out there, the decent ones. I mean, I don't mean like go for a weekend and learn how to become a coach. I'm talking about, you know, the invested programs. Mine was six months long, 245 hours, PhD level program. Um, but they teach the science of coaching. Yes. They don't teach how to run a business of coaching. No. And so that is, yeah. you know, that's partly why I wrote that article, you know, especially for the women who are laid off or coming out of the corporate arena thinking, well, you know, maybe it's time for me to start my own gig. Well, Yes, you might have some knowledge of writing a business plan or be able to read financials or to understand about sales. And, you know, you're not scared. You know, you're not throwing up doing a presentation in front of everybody. So, hey, maybe I can make it. Well, there's other things. So before you risk all of your savings, before you step into that hole, because it is kind of like a black hole, right? You can do a business plan. You can spend three months doing a business plan in, in five seconds flat along comes COVID and changes the landscape. So you have to be flexible and adaptable. You have to have deep resources. You have to have a support network. You have to have people who are at your same level and are working at a much bigger playing field already to yes. be able to mentor you because what you're, I believe what you're sharing more of when you're directing people like do this, do this, do this. For me, that's mentoring versus what I'm doing, which is coaching, which is holding the space of possibility. I'm not going to tell you how to run your business, but I'm going to I'm going to point out here's a framework for success. How fast do you want to go? How ready are you? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to risk? And what are the results you're trying to get to so that they have the clarity and the support that they need? And yeah. then they drive their own bus, right? Yeah. Once we figure out where they want to go, 
with the mindset though that they're not going to see all the stops along the way in advance they're going to have a big vision and then as jennifer huff you and i both know jennifer huff says you know you're going to act on what's coming towards you you're not going to try and force water uphill but by saying well i did my business plan and that's what my plan says for the next six months no you've got to adapt you've got to be like a fish you've got to swim with the current and and act on what's showing up for you because otherwise sometimes you're just creating resistance you're you know you're pushing against stuff that's not naturally what the universe is telling you is your next step and uh I know for this from experience, even the last couple of weeks, I was like trying to figure one thing out in particular. And I have to sit with it, create some space to let it bubble through me and feel into what is the next step. It's not the one on my business plan, actually, right now. I agree. <laughs> but one of the things you talk about, um, you know, you do have to have a three year entrepreneur evolution roadmap. And because most people come into one of the biggest mistakes is they come into business thinking they're going to make six figures in six months or less or in a weekend or whatever, because that's what they Possible, out, yeah. there. You're yeah. out there. But it's not a realistic expectation. Let's face it. Can you do it? Yes. Will most people do it? No. And in fact, some people who are a little bit more hesitant to sales conversations who maybe aren't good with the words inside a sales conversation or in a networking or speaking environment or even online to actually ask people to come and talk to them or take a next step. Those people will take definitely three years to ramp up a business and start seeing a smooth running money making business machine. That's the kind of thing I talk to. So the number one thing, uh, well, not the number one thing, but one of the things to self-sabotage is to think that you're gonna do it faster than you can. So you do need to look at your reserve cash flow, that you have to look, I think, at making fast cash now. Where can you make money now? Where, like I have some people sometimes come to me and wanna leave their job and do a paid speaking business. I say, great, that's awesome. Just plan that you may not get your first paid speaking gig for 18 months, could be two years, because we have to build the platform. And most people don't look for paid speakers usually in the next couple months. So you may not make money right away as a paid speaker, but that can be the ultimate goal. In the meantime, what can we sell? What can we sell to get you through the next year or two as we're building that business? And so having an expectation that they're gonna do exactly what they want right now in 30 days or 90 days and start making good money so they can leave their job. It's not about, it's, and it's also not about replacing your job income. Well, I would need to replace $125,000 a year. I've had that many times someone said that to me. Yeah. And I'm like, well, <laughs> when you don't have your full-time job, then you have 40, 50 hours a week to actually work the business and get more leads. So really you only need enough to maybe uncomfortably survive, tap into savings or credit, what, and then leave the job, especially if you're really happy, so that it can free you up to just get busy in your business. Yep. So there's a lot of expectations, I think, that people put on themselves for how soon and how fast things can happen based on some what other people say. And it does rely on personality sometimes, and uh, but also their abilities. You can always learn more scale skills. You can always learn how to market. You were mentioning yeah. the coaching schools. I didn't go to coaching school, but I have a lot of experience in sales and marketing. And so one of the biggest things people don't teach is the sales and marketing. And that's the most important thing that entrepreneurs need to know is you have to master marketing and sales or you yeah. won't have a business and you might as well go get a job. So a couple of things to share around that topic. Um, great insight. Um, if you don't like the word sales, right? I mean, people say, well, you know, what are you doing? Well, um, I'm, you know, I'm a business entrepreneur. So do you love sales? Well, I love serving. So a lot of my clients come to me and they're not seeing the results they want because they don't really like the word sales. They like doing the work, but they don't like getting the work. And so I've actually encouraged a number of them to relabel the word sales. And I know you're probably going to cringe when you hear this, but re relanguage it. Don't call it sales if you're not willing to step into it. Call it service, because as soon as you have that first conversation and they become a client, you're in service mode anyway. So why don't you start with, I am here to serve, and that will set you up for the beingness, the energy of collaboration and relationship right away. The other thing is I discovered a tool a couple of years ago 
which is based on personality science and values. You talked about values a minute ago. So when I was interviewing and hiring, oh, 6,000 people in my career, I always hired based on values and trained on skills, just like you said. So if I think it's black, you think it's white, and that's our values, we are never gonna agree in the middle it's gray. We're just gonna keep bumping heads, right? Same thing with clients. <clears throat> what I found was a quick and easy tool, it's 90 seconds to take this personality assessment. I think you have the link on, the, you can pop it up on the screen. But what it tells me is how does someone want to connect based on their value set? There's four different value sets. One is a blueprint personality, which is very traditional and structured and no risk. One is an action, which is all about go-go results and fast and celebrity and money. The second, the third one is nurturing, which is my primary code, all about making a difference, making an impact, personal growth and development and community. And the last one is knowledge. So it spells out the letters B-A-N-K. That's the bank code that this system is called. The last one is knowledge, which is not about hearing anything I say. It's about show me, show me, proof, proof, data, science, reports, external validation. So those two, blueprint and knowledge, take a long time to make a decision. So if you know that going in, then you don't rush them. You help them through the process. You help them see the results. You help them look at the stats versus you and I are action and nurturing. So we make decisions based on emotion and we make them fast. We're either in or we're not. And so this is a 90 second tool. I, I will offer a free gift for anyone who's listening this to, to this uh, segment today. It's worth $99. So my gift to you is check it out. Take the link, takes 90 seconds to figure out what your personality code is. And when you know yours, then you know how to connect with the other three codes as well. And there's a, there you go. There you I go. have the bank cards. I love that. There you go. So that. that's, that's something that I use with my clients all the time. And especially if they have a, a nurturing primary personality and maybe blueprint or maybe knowledge second, because they're really good at what they do, but they don't have that sales and marketing thirst like an action-oriented primary code does. So how do we work with that? How do we still support them? So if they can build a connection fast and hear what the client really needs based on values, it shortens the sales cycle dramatically. It's called sales velocity. Instead of 10, 10, 10 conversations, we have two, maybe three, and it's you're in or you're out. Yeah, because I've respectfully built that connection, knowing your values and what you pay attention to. That's good, and it will definitely help people in the sales process for sure, and yeah. uh, and also be able to because um, not everybody's going to buy, right? Not everybody knowing not everybody's going to buy your stuff, and in fact, not everyone is your client, right? Right, and there's billions of people on the planet. <laughs> And some people say, well, nobody's buying, nobody's buying. Well, you're just not talking to enough people because there's millions billion. of people on the planet. And all we the literally need this many. Like all of us, each of us need this many out of all the yeah. people on the planet. Very small yeah. amount of people. But you have to talk to more people. You can't just, if you want 10 clients, talk to 10 or 12 people. You have to talk to hundreds of people, maybe even thousands of people to get 10 clients. It really depends. I, I, would, I'm, I would liken it. I mean, sort of the the older way of marketing is kind of like this you know this big funnel right where you've got to talk to thousands of people and what I'm actually uh, encouraging my clients to do differently is to get really really clear on who your ideal client avatar is like be really finite very niche like mine is women entrepreneurs who are seeking to flourish it's typically you know they're between two and $500,000 a year is what they're making currently, and it's not working. They want more beach time, and they want more revenue. Yeah. Okay, you can make that happen. But when you have that very narrow niche of who you're serving, it's not about having you know all those big conversations. Like It's not about quantity. It's about the quality of who's your ideal client and how do you attract just them. So you're not creating chaos and churn. You're being very specific and having more of those high caliber conversations. So how, with your knowledge about marketing, how do we create more of those? What are you seeing? Yeah, well, and that's, 
again, you're not, they're not in the right places. So this is what I would suggest. You have to look at what you look like. Look at what you look like and where you're hanging out. Are you yeah. hanging out with your ideal people? My ideal client is totally different than yours. It's mostly women. I would say 95% women. Uh, and it's two different kinds of business. Either they just started and they don't know what to do and want to know what to do right from the start so they don't make a lot of mistakes. Or it's the woman who's been in business for a long, doing really well, but she's ready to scale or grow or go to the next level or totally tweak what she's doing. And right. she's too busy to focus on all of what needs to happen. So she needs direction on that. So it's the jump start, no matter where you are, you know. Yeah. And so it's um, and it's mostly mostly people are under 100,000 that I work with. I would say 70% are under 100,000. They're still trying to get to the need number, I say, the need number of what they need to, so they don't have to pull out of savings anymore. So they feel like less stress about paying their bills, the money's coming in. We wanna to get to that smooth running money making business machine where we can actually take a vacation or two every year, where we can take days off when we want and not stress about having a paying client, not stress about actually making a sale every week. That is such a freeing experience to just know that the right people will come through through the systems that I have in the marketing, the lead generation, the website. So when I say like, what do you look like in this day and age, if you don't have a, what I say, a wow website, it doesn't have to mean it costs a lot of money, but you better look damn good on your website. You better have your shit together. You better have all the bells and whistles. Again, it doesn't have to be expensive anymore. It used to be that you have to spend 10 or $20,000 to get all this but now it's much less expensive and you should never be doing your own website. I know web designers that shouldn't be doing their own website because <laughs> they're too close to it. So that has changed dramatically from 10 years ago. Okay? Well, it's not, it's not only about tech, right? It's no. about anything that you do inside of your business, right? That's that shift from solopreneur to CEO that I mentioned because trying to be the, you know, the bottle washer and the cook and all of those things, you know, you, if you're trying to do your own accounting, you're not going to be keeping up on all the latest legislation or the latest grants or the latest tax breaks, et cetera. That's what your tax and accounting team is looking after. If it's tech, I don't have time to, I don't want to keep up with all the latest tools on tech, right? I just tell me which is the affiliate program that has multi layers and tracks it. And, and get it implemented for me and give me a link that I can give to someone. Thank you. Um, because you you want to be doing the, the work in your business that you're passionate about, that only you and you alone can do, and is the, the activities that take your business, as you say, jumpstart it. They leapfrog you into a whole new arena. And that's mostly because you've invested in building a relationship with someone that's not a job for someone on your team to be doing typically and i i will say you know yvonne you're throwing out a lot of things to hire a team and do this and hire these people and hire these people and a lot of people that i work with just so they're watching um you're going to do this in phases okay so i would say you're going to yep. hire these people in phases and yes, you can afford it. You have to figure out how you can afford it rather than saying, I can't afford it. You have to get those words out of your vocabulary because the more you say, I can't afford this, I can't afford a coach, I can't afford a new web designer, I can't the afford a <laughs> the more, yeah, the more you're going to get that in return when, some, when you're talking to a prospect. So you have to say, how can I do this? And what I, I have a resource too on my website, it's called my need number worksheet. I have a worksheet that will help you figure out those things you don't know you don't need. You don't know you need when you need them. So it's, um, let's see, I was gonna make it not a ticker. Okay, well, it's a ticker. Um, it's on the Don't Start Your Biz Now free trainings page because it's called my need number worksheet. I can almost guarantee anybody who's Anybody who's going to watch this has a smaller money goal than they should. Okay. And when I say should, I mean, you're not thinking of all the things you need to invest in and pay for every month. And because you're just putting it off to, well, I can't afford that until I make more money, then I'll put it into my 
into my budget. Well, I don't agree with the word budget. I don't, I think you can make as much money as you want. So I don't put a budget in together. I put a need number and then a want number together. And so the need number, what are the things that's going to make me more successful and help give me some time back so I can spend more time doing the revenue producing sales activities I need to do that is delegating some of it. So I talk about how much you need to put into that goal for this person and that person and this person. And then all of a sudden your goal went from 3000 to 8,000 or from 8,000 to 15,000. And then you're probably going, well, how the hell am I going to do that? Well, then we say, okay, well then you need to raise your rates. So you need a high end program, or then we have to crumb, come up with the ideas for making that kind of money. So when you right. have the right need number, you can set, you can set your pricing and your products and all that better and know how many people you need to talk to in order to make that number happen. When you set it too low, then you settle and you never make those higher numbers. Yeah. You just don't know what you don't know to put in there. Yeah. And, uh, and as my coach says too, I mean, if you don't have the, um, the clarity around what the expenses are that are inside your business, when you're making up your price points, it's like, you know, where are yes. you getting it from, right? <laughs> she talks about pulling it out of the hiney. Um, because yeah, somebody, you don't yeah, have the, the costs, right? So with that clarity um, comes some planning, whether you label it a budget or a needs and, you know, need now, um, but know what the expenses are that are going to support you because every single thing that you pay for in your business, whether it's your stationery or, you know, printing uh, workbooks or whatever it is, everything, that means your paid days off, your paid holidays, your medical appointments, anything yeah. that takes you out of your business needs to be paid for by your clients. So if you say, well, in a normal week, I'm going to be working, you know, five days a week, nine to five. Um, then, you know, there's, uh, I think it works out to 100, 1,020 hours per month that you could be working and could be billing. Everything has to come out of that. So people say, well, you know, I used to make 70,000 in my job. Well, then you need to add another zero to that mm -hmm. and have that as your target to be able to pull out what you want to pull out. Yeah, because like, I will yeah. tell you, even if you make two or 300,000 a year, which I've done, you think, oh, that's plenty of money. Uh -uh. No, it's not because the, the more money you make, the more team you need, the more structure and systems you need. And the, you know, not the less you're taking home, but the, the, it's not, I, I don't think like <laughs> until I really got to that level, I'm like, no, now I need 500,000 because, uh, my expenses aren't going to increase too much more, but they do increase from 50,000 to 150. Your expenses increase a lot that you don't realize. And so your goal is going to need to be higher, which means your confidence needs to be higher about your worth and your value and what you bring to the table. And then your strategy and the doing stuff needs to be more um, in quantity, that, but there's systems for that, automation and team that can help you so you don't have to work so hard. That's the right. whole goal. People think, oh, I just have to work more because we were told as kids or our parents, like the more you work, the more you make. And that's not necessarily true. The smarter you work, the more you make. Yeah. <laughs> smarter versus harder. Exactly. <laughs> well, Oh my God. Like, so this is a lot, this is a lot of stuff. And, um, I know we could sit here for hours and, but you know, we've touched on a lot of the biggest mistakes. We touched on some of the things that people don't think about or that like must to not think about what are maybe, <clears throat> you know, what's a good next step for you besides the 90 minute personality. If they want to get to know you, Yvonne, like how can they do that? Um, you can actually come to, I'm ha having a session on November 1st, which is um, three secrets to moving up from a solopreneur to a CEO. So if you're listening and you're thinking, well, I've been in business for a little while, I am i don't wanna do all these jobs myself anymore. I've got enough revenue to be able to start looking at bringing people on board or at least talking about it. Um, join me on November 1st, 10 o'clock in the morning mountain time. The event is listed on my website under the events tab. So yvonnesilver.com slash events. Um, I've got to just update the date on it because I ran it in September. I'm going to run it again November 1st. So put that in your calendar. Okay. And if you uh, take advantage of that free gift of receiving the personality report, 
it's a customized report, it's $99 value, why wouldn't you take it as a free gift? Um, then I'll be able to keep in touch with you and invite you to get the update with the link to register for that. It's November 1st, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and it's moving up from a solopreneur to a CEO and how to do that. Love that. So important. That's great. We'll be out on LinkedIn. That's another way to keep in touch. <laughs> LinkedIn. Yeah, we're both on LinkedIn. I'm more on Facebook and you're more on LinkedIn, I think. Uh, that's okay. And uh, so for me, obviously, there's the free stuff. I have a whole bunch of free stuff on that free um, trainings page, jumpstartyourbiznow.com forward slash free trainings. A lot of people do like to start there. But for those of you who know you need more guidance and the doing and like a real roadmap to what to do and what to stop doing, because that's one of the biggest things, then I would invite you to come to my November event. Um, right now, if you go to jumpstartevents.net, um, for those of you paying attention, I love entrepreneurs paying attention. You should see some of my emails that I send. They're like, oh, if you're reading this, then you get this for free or you get this, blah, blah, blah. And only those who pay attention actually get the thing. So I love people who pay attention and take action, um, as you can tell. And I want to work with those people who are hungry for more success, more revenue, and just stop working so hard. A better life. We want a better life. So you can get in for 97 bucks instead of 297 if you use the coupon code that's in the ticker right now. And you're paying attention, 200 off. And uh, honestly, I mean, it's three days of working with me on all this stuff. Deep dive, what to do, how to do it. It's my training that I do twice a year. I do it mostly for my clients because they need training. But I invite up to 100 people total. That's it. So I don't want 500 people like with these big screens and virtual and all this stuff. I want to talk to people. I want to be able to say, Susan, no, you do this. Oh, Mary, no, you do that. Right? I want to be able to give you extreme clarity and confidence to be able to know exactly what to do to go get clients right now and make money today. That's what we do. Cool. So I don't know if it's possible to put in the ticker as well, um, how to access that assessment that I mentioned. I did um, a few times. Um, okay, cool. So if you are listening and not seeing it, if it's on your small uh, phone, phone screen, um, text the word code, C-O-D-E, to 403-668-9279. That's one yeah. way to access it. If for some reason you're in Australia and that isn't working through your telephone system, um, find me on LinkedIn, just send me a note and I'll send you another link. Yeah. Or you That's can okay. use the link on the screen. There we go. Thank you. This was a live video, but we also are going to be sharing it everywhere, right? So because this is such an important conversation that I know Yvonne and I are going to share this out. So if you're watching this after we did it live, that's okay. Reach out to us. You know, if you missed the event or whatever, like just reach out because we are here to support you in building your happiest life ever, your best, most successful business, um, doing what you love. And thanks for coming on today, Yvonne, playing with me. It was fun. Thanks for the, uh, yeah, thanks for the chat. It's always great to uh, bounce ideas off and hear different perspectives from another entrepreneur who has a you know, slightly different focus or I know. different tools. And as I said, my work is more around coaching people into their potential versus telling although I do have a you know a three-part flourish program as well which is the visualize first then monetize and then optimize um, and and helping people to step through that at their pace so they're supported um, but they're not like pushed off the <laughs> not pushed off the edge without having a parachute <laughs> I have plenty of nurture in me too. It's just, <laughs> yeah, because my clients would not be with me for three to five years if I wasn't. So, so yeah. there's just yeah. not, it's too exhausting to do that whole time. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I get you. Um, very nice. Have a good day, everyone. Good luck on your journey of entrepreneurialism. And please do the right thing sooner than later. Learn what you don't know you don't know and stop being stop thinking you're going to do it all yourself. Biggest number yeah. one mistake. All yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thank Bye, you. Everyone. Thanks. Bye, everyone.